If you are an independent scholar like me, or are based in a developing nation, or even work for a small university in the United States, chances are you do not have access to expensive databases in your field of study. I'm here to introduce you today to Consensus, an affordable, powerful new search engine. So let's explore it a little bit. So Consensus is an AI-powered search engine, and it can perform various research functions for you, and it's highly affordable. In today's video, I will first introduce Consensus and then show you how to do a search on it and a few other of its functions. Now for full disclosure, this is a sponsored video and I'm being compensated for reviewing consensus, but I have not been asked to uncritically recommend it. My recommendations are based in my testing and trial of the search engine. Now please stay and watch until the end so that you can learn how to use consensus, but also maybe more importantly, I'll be sharing a discount code towards the end of the video, which will give you a 40% discount on the premium plan for consensus. So let's explore consensus, but before I do that, let me share some of the things that I know about it and why it's important to have a search engine like consensus. I think the most important thing that something such as this search engine consensus does is it democratizes knowledge and makes it affordable. Now, I say this based in my personal experience. When I worked for a research university, I was the chair of the library board. And one of the biggest expenses that the library had was every year setting aside money to pay for the databases that we absolutely needed to have. That is when we learned to our horror that six large corporations in the world own all of peer-reviewed published knowledge. And they were so powerful that every year they will escalate the rate 8% minimum. And they would not negotiate with you because they knew that the universities had to have those databases to keep their research going and for accreditation purposes. The sad part of it is that most of that research was given to the journals from which these huge companies had bought the knowledge freely. Sometimes the science authors actually even pay a subvention fee. So within that scenario, when someone like me leaves a research university and you are used to using these expensive databases, how do you conduct your research? For me, mostly I've been relying on the books that I could buy, the online sources that I could access, and Google Scholar. Now what consensus does is, it uses AI, but it's different from other AI search engines. It so far has access to more than 200 million peer-reviewed published papers. So when we search on consensus then, unlike other AI search products, consensus says search engine draws its information from peer-reviewed research. Now this is something which usually is only available to people who work at research universities. It makes it affordable. Now I still think that the price could be steep for someone who is not living in the developed world, right? But making it possible for us to individually purchase access to peer-reviewed research, I think, is a path to the right kind of knowledge availability in the world. Now, as I said towards the end of this video, I'll be sharing a discount code, which if you use, you will get a 40% discount on 
I think, a one-year subscription to Consensus. Now, please bear in mind, I do not get a commission if you purchase access to Consensus. Now, let's go into and see how does the interface look like and what can you do with it. There are two things that I'll be explaining. I'll be explaining, one, how to conduct a general search, and two, how to create a draft of a literature review. But I will have some qualifications about the second towards the end of this video. So let's go and see how the interface works. OK, so when you go to the consensus website, and I'll post the link in the description, this is the interface you get. You get a search bar, which has synthesize and co-pilot at the bottom. And I'll explain what those do. But basically, you start your research by asking a question. Now, consensus is built around asking yes and no questions. That means that the synthesize function is if you ask a yes and no question in any field of study, right? Let's say, do vitamins help or health? It will pull resources from medical journals, but it, then it will also give you a consensus, how many percentage of papers are in favor of your question, how many oppose it, right? So that's why it's called consensus. It gives us a scientific consensus and gives us a consensus meter. So let's do a yes and no search, right? Do So my question is, do vitamins help with heart diseases? Let's see what it gives us. OK, so if you see on the left, we get a summary. Now, this summary is built around the resources from which consensus has pulled this knowledge. On the right is the consensus meter. OK, now it tells us 31% of the research that the search engine consulted says, yes, vitamins help. Possibly 25% of the research. 44% of the research suggests that, no, they don't have a significant impact on our health. Our question was, do vitamins help with heart diseases? So this is an example of when you can ask a yes and no question. And then if you scroll down, it will summarize the research for you. It will give you the key insights and a conclusion. And then it will list the journal, journal articles that it has pulled the information from. Now, this alone is a powerful, powerful resource. Even when I was at a research university in humanities, I could not get this granular answer to my questions. But since my audience is mostly humanities, let's also do a search which is not a yes and no question, and which is about, let's say, research in humanities. What are some major themes in things fall apart? which is, of course, Chinua Achebe's famous novel. So it has no consensus meter because our question wasn't yes or no question. But you get a summary, right? And then you get a summary of key themes, major themes, right below, right? And then you get different articles, and that's where the detail is. For example, if you look at this article, we know where it was pu pu published, International Jour Journal for Multidisciplinary Research. It doesn't have any citations, and it was published in 2023, right? Now, if you want to see the details about the study, study snapshot usually gives you the details. Like if you were in social sciences, it will give you the details of whether it was a controlled study, whether it was 
you know, a study based in humans. All of those details you'll get from study snapshot. But you can also add filters in your search. So if you look here, the filters include, you can, ch you can choose from which year to which year. You can choose how many citations, what research method was used. You can name journals. You can even put a filter for country, right? So these are all the filters that you can use before you even start yours. So that was about how to conduct basic research using consensus. Let us see how it performs when we ask it to compose a literature review for us. Okay, so you can also ask the search engine to write a literature review for you. As I said, I'll have more detailed opinions about whether or not it's advisable or not, but let me first show you its capabilities. So you j simply ask it a question or you tell it, write a literature review for themes in things fall apart. So right now you can see that it has analyzed 10 papers and it has given you a draft of a literature review. And it will give you citations in text as to where that information is coming from, right? And then at the bottom, full citations of each 10 papers that it has pulled from, it will give you the details of those. It can pull from up to 20 papers for a literature review. Now, this is just to show you the process of how it does that. Now, if you need additional information about any of these things, if you go to the bottom of the website, I mean, if my video doesn't cover anything, you can just click on how to search and they will show you what best practices are there and how best to conduct a search. So as you just saw in my brief demonstration, it's a powerful academic search engine. And you can give it your search parameters. You can even add filter and then it will pull up out of all the resources that are available to consensus at this point, millions of papers, peer reviewed papers, and that is likely to increase. And then under certain circumstances, you can also ask it to write a draft of your literature review. Now, as far as the search is concerned, I say it's really a powerful academic search engine. And especially if you are like me and do not have access to a Z research library, or if you are an independent scholar or a student even in a high school and you're school usually here, high schools don't even have libraries anymore. This could be something that puts a powerful search engine in your pocket. If you are in the developing world, I'm originally from Pakistan, such databases are really, really, rarely available at universities. And with a little bit of investment, you could have access to some of the finest peer-reviewed research, no matter which field of study you are in. And I think consensus as an academic search engine does that for all of us. Now, a bit of a cautionary note from me as a scholar. You can use consensus to write your literature review, a draft of it. But remember, literature review isn't just a review of articles that you have found online. Literature review is based in you having read all the materials. That's why you're giving a review of them. And then your research either builds on that review or finds the gap in the research and builds on that. So if you ask consensus to write a literature review, 
without having read or without having researched, then you're neither learning anything new nor producing anything new in the research world, right? That is what I would consider a lazy kind of scholarship. I do not recommend it. However, if you use it to generate a list of articles which you ought to read or ought to have read, I think that's a fair use of this software and this search engine. So that's my cautionary note about asking any AI, even consensus, to write something for you. Because I think writing is where your own originality and your style must show. And you cannot ask a machine, doesn't matter how powerful, to do that work for you. But as far as search is concerned, looking up sources, filtering sources according to the kind of study, the area, the years, I think consensus is a powerful search engine and it is likely to make a huge impact in my life as a scholar, but also in the lives of so many others who may not have access to expensive databases made available by research universities. Now, as I promised that there will be a code for you to use, the code is my name, Masood, all caps, Masood 40. So you can sign up with a free account. When you go to upgrade, when you click on that, it will ask you for a code. Just put Masood 40 and you will get a 40% discount on your subscription. That's all I have. Thank you so much. I hope this was useful to you. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Also, please do take a few moments to subscribe to the channel so that you get timely notifications of new content. And I am, as always, grateful for your support. Thank you for your time. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. Until then, peace and love.